Um, I have a quick slide deck to go through. Um, we're going to cover some some basics about CSM, what's included. So first thing I want to kind of highlight some baseline functionality that CSM provides. One of the main things about CSM is that you are able to give access to external users. So these users should be anyone who is not within the company. It could either be a B2B use case or a B2C business to consumer use case. The external users, if, if they have the external role, then they're not going to be able to see anything within the platform unless you open up that access. Another cool thing that CSM provides is self-registration. So if you're using uh, business to business, you can provide a company code to the companies you're doing business with, and they could give out that code. So an admin on the company side could give out that code for their users to come into the portal and self-register. And also if you're doing B2C, then there's also a, a two-step registration process where uh, you do some validation through email after you sign up. Uh, then of course you get the customer portal and there's also a consumer portal, uh, chat virtual agent, you get agent workspace, uh, new with New York, you get a landing page. So I'll show a little bit of that in the demo. Uh, major issue management. So it's called major, major issue management, um, which is really just major case management. There's also a concept of install base, which I think is new with New York. And that's the ability to track customers' uh, purchases of products and services and the relationship between those products with CIs and whatnot. So as an agent, you can easily see when a customer calls in or they submit a case, what what the issue is about and what products they own. There's also the concept of, um, or I think there's a new functionality in New York, uh, except that I saw a problem article back in 2017 about, around being able to reply, reply all or forward from within the uh, activity stream when you get an email that comes in. So I'll show you guys that one, but I did find a UI macro that was disabled and I tried enabling that, that didn't work. And what you had to do was actually enable this uh, system property. Um, assignment workbench, which is not only for CSM, but you, you can use it with, with other records as well. Um, actionable case flows. So with CSM out of box, there are case flows that, so when you, when a customer sends an email, for example, into a case or adds a comment, there are certain fields, there's a needs attention field and an action status field that gets updated to indicate to the agent that this case needs your needs the agent's review. Um, and there's also a bunch of other flows as well to show if something is being blocked internally or externally by the customer. And then uh, also with New York, there's also a closed case flow that comes out of box. So for anyone who has implemented CSM, that's normally a typical ask is once you resolve a case similar to when you're resolving an incident, can it auto close? And so in the past, I've always had to reuse the incident, the way incidents close um, or use my own flow to close the case, but now that, that also comes out of box. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things on this list. Um, CSM is, has a ton of flexibility and functionality, but these were some of the main main things that stuck out for me. So with CSM, there are, there are two primary use cases, B2B and B2C. So B2B, you'll be dealing with accounts and contacts. Uh, you could deal with partners. So if, if the account has a partner that represents them, they could also be included and have access to that account's cases. Users and groups, obviously, that's really just indicate you have agents, managers, um, and the roles for those, for those users. You could associate product models and assets to a business or an account, uh, service contracts, entitlements, customer relationships. So if two accounts have relationships, uh, you could you could identify that within the within ServiceNow, asset relationships, and then also account teams. So account teams, meaning if you have a set of agents who only work work on a specific account, um, you could set up teams for that, that account. And then the other use case is B2C, so business to consumer. Um, one way to think about this is like if, uh, the businesses, let's say Best Buy and consumer would be me and you, you know, we go in, we buy a TV and we have an issue with it. We would be opening a ticket with Best Buy. Um, so this one's a little more straightforward. You have consumers, um, again, users and groups, and then you could also associate products and assets to, to the consumer. So just real quick, here's a, an example of an account record. And I'll show you a little bit of, um, of this in the system as well. So accounts, they, they support external customers. Um, you can have a customer, partner, um, or both. And accounts can be associated to assets, contracts, entitlements, SLAs. 
So in this example here, we're looking at a Boxio account. You can see the checkbox for a customer is checked. You have some information about the account to the right, um, website address, whatnot. And then you could also have parent-child relationships with accounts. So down here at the bottom, you can see we're looking at the main Boxio account, but there, there are also three child accounts, USA, EMEA, and Canada. Next, we have contacts. So contacts are going to be uh, user records that represent the employee of the account. They could have a user ID so that they can log into the customer portal. They don't have to. Uh, they could be Contacts could only be associated to a single account, and then accounts will have multiple contacts. And next, we have consumers. So these are going to be the consumer records. They're the customer of a B2C case. Um, a consumer could have multiple addresses. They only have one primary address. Uh, you could create a user record that you associate to the consumer record if they need to be able to log into the consumer portal. If they were to go into the consumer portal and self-register, then that, that user record would automatically get created for them. So in that case, you would have a, you'd have a consumer record as well as a, I think it's called a consumer user record. And the consumer user is an extension of the user table. So service contracts and entitlements, seems like this is more of like a phase two uh, CSM implementation. Most companies I've seen haven't, they haven't been ready to utilize the contracts and entitlements. Um, they may have the data, but they're not ready to, to completely shift all that into service now. But with, with accounts and B2B cases, you can associate contracts to, to an account. It stores information about the type of support for that account. And it could also be associated to multiple entitlements and SLAs. So example here, you're looking at a contract for Boxio, and this is a three-year service contract. Um, and it, it, all, it does utilize the, uh, the base contract table within ServiceNow. I think the one difference is that it adds the account field to it so that you can associate it directly to an account. And you can see down at the bottom, you can see all the cases for a contract, um, terms and conditions if you built some assets covered and also entitlements. So this is kind of more high level general, uh, what support an account should get. And then you have the concept of entitlement. So this would define the type of support a customer receives, whether it's going to be based on number of cases or number of hours. Uh, you can identify what channels of support they can receive, if it's only web or if they're, um, they should be getting support through chat, phone as well. Um, you could add that there into the channel field. They could, entitlements could be associated to a product, an asset, account, contact. Typical use case would probably be an entitlement to an account. And then the different ways entitlements can be calculated. You could either do entitlements by cases, so number of cases, or hours. So the way it works here is if you look down at the right-hand corner, you have total units is 10, remaining units is 7. We're calculating based on cases. And then we have per unit checked. So if you don't have per unit checked, then this just kind of becomes a record of information. You're, you're tracking based on cases, number of cases. But if you, if you check the per unit box, then ServiceNow will attempt to calculate the total units and the remaining units for you. So for example, if we have 10, 10 total units, seven remaining units, and I go out and close a case today, the remaining units would decrease by one. And then once you get to zero, that's when you can, um, you can set up alerts or notifications and you know, uh, work with the customer to basically re-up their support. Mm -hmm.